I propose that you, the business leaders here gathered in Davos, and we, the United Nations, initiate a global compact of shared values and principles which will give a human face to the global market. It is very important that all companies, both large and small, sign on to the global compact. Ghana accepted the need to be part of the global compact. So it is always very important in good corporate government to make sure that whatever development activity, whether as a nation or as a company particularly, is not done to the total detriment of human beings and their well-being. The UN Global Compact Initiative is a strategic policy initiative for businesses that are committed to aligning their operations and strategies with 10 universally accepted principles in the areas of human rights, labor, environment, and anti-corruption. The compact was launched in July 2000 as a response to a challenge by the former UN Secretary General, Mr. Kofi Annan, to business leaders at the World Economic Forum in January 1999, and it stands today as the world's largest corporate citizenship and sustainability initiative with over 5,200 corporate participants and stakeholders from over 130 countries. I propose that you, the business leaders here gathered in Davos, and we, the United Nations, initiate a global compact of shared values and principles which will give a human face to the global market. The global compact is only underscoring the importance of doing business in a very responsible manner being responsive to human rights, making sure that you do not destroy the environment, making sure that the people you work with are seen as the key elements of any business venture. The Global Compact really ensures that you report on how you're doing in those principles. And therefore, year on by year, and you tell your stakeholders, whether they are shareholders, people who buy from you, your workers, how you're living up to those principles. Every customer, every consumer wants to deal with a good business entity, one that is doing business right. So we believe strongly that if a business signs onto the compact and it puts into practice the principles as espoused in the UN Global Compact, we'll be doing business right. The Compact thrives on 10 principles, which are centered on human rights, labor, environment, and anti-corruption. The first theme on human rights has two principles. That's that businesses should support and respect the protection of internationally proclaimed human rights. Mm -hmm. And the second one is that businesses should make sure that they are not complicit in human rights abuses. Mm -hmm. Then when we come to labor, it has four themes. That says that businesses should uphold the freedom of association and the effective recognition of the right to collective bargaining. And then the fourth one, that is the second one, the labor, says the elimination of all forms of forced and compulsory labor. Principle five, which is the effective abolition of child labor. And then principle six is the elimination of discrimination in respect of employment and occupation. Now, under environment, there are two, uh, three principles. That is the principle seven, eight, and nine. And they say that uh, businesses are asked to support a precautionary approach to environmental challenges. And the principle eight says business should undertake initiatives to promote greater environmental responsibility. Whilst the nine talk about that business should encourage the development and diffusion of environmentally friendly technologies. Mm -hmm. Now, anti corruption is the last. Um, Theme and has principle 10, just one principle, and that is that businesses should work against corruption in all its forms, including extortion and bribery. It is very important that all companies, both large and small, sign on to the Global Compact. This is because, whether we like it or not, we're living in a global village. And what happens here in Ghana has important dimensions for London, 
for New York, for Bonn, for Berlin. The reason is that now we, we understand that the world's resources are very finite. And so it is very important for us to know how to utilize the resources of this earth so that we can all benefit from it in our own generation and that generations after us would also have the use of the earth and its resources. The next thing is that people are extremely important when you're thinking of development. And this is where the United Nations Conventions on Human Rights are very important. In our bid to develop, we must not trample on the rights of others. And so it is always very important in good corporate governance to make sure that whatever development activity, whether as a nation or as a company particularly, uh, is not done to the total detriment of human beings and their well-being. Asking your workers to wear protective clothing, it saves you time on people being sick because if they've gotten ill from being exposed or haven't getting hurt from not wearing the proper clothing, or even people seeing you because they got ill. At the end of the day, you might make all the money, but when the name goes around that you're a bad business person, maybe in that part of the world, it's really not caught on. But in, in, in the developed world, people do always run a check and see how socially responsible you are before they do business with us. If you're a corporate organization, you cannot say that you don't want any unionization, you don't want any associations, that you will stand in the way of people coming together to form a union or to form an association to talk about their welfare. You cannot also decide that you will let people work beyond the 40-hour week that has been internationally accepted without paying any further compensation, whether in overtime or in other perks. You cannot also force people to do work that is detrimental to their health. These are some things that are also addressed. And then we have the issue of child labor. That is also both a human right and against also international labor rules. So that too is something very important. The last principle is on anti-corruption. And this is the only convention that is actually legally binding. And in fact, we live in a world which has shown categorically that the greed of a few can actually turn the whole world upside down. We also know in a lot of developing countries that even one city that is either misapplied or corruptly used to benefit individuals is a, is a total cost to the development of the nation. The Global Compact was launched in Ghana in July 2002 by the former Vice President Alaji Aliu Mahama and currently has over 30 participants, which comprises of companies, SMEs, business associations, labor organizations, and NGOs. It started with a search uh, from UNDP saying who are the core business people in Ghana we could do business with. And we therefore used the Ghana Club 100 as the basis to say okay, who are the 10 top 10, 20, 50 companies in Ghana that if we really wanted to engage, to talk about the principles of the Global Compact. At that point, there were nine principles. So we did a bit of discussions, invited a few companies around the table to talk about it. And we got a, a bit of excitement around it, particularly from the then uh, Chief Executive of Anglo Gold Ghana, Mr. Jonah. When the Global Compact was established, Mr. Kofi Annan, the Secretary General, then invited some good corporate and also uh, civil society organizations persons to join him on the board, and Mr. Jonah was one of them. So when we started off, what we had said to do is find in our alongside company, we also operate in a, an, an environment of a country, and therefore it's important to bring government on board. And then we also looked at the civil society side to see who else we could engage. So we got in, uh, the Employees Association was there, the Private Enterprise Foundation was there, but we also got Amnesty International site that would have a blend. So that was the genesis of the Global Compact in Ghana. The local network is really the body of all those who have signed on to the compact. 
And so within the network, there is a, a steering committee or a small executive committee that meets in between meetings of the whole network. The network is a learning platform for all members. It is also a platform on which we strengthen one another. The Ghana network activities are concentrated in learning, projects, outreach and networks. That is, assisting companies with the implementation and internalization of the 10 principles by organizing learning events. You need to be a good business person. What we normally say, corporately, be socially responsible. Cite that whilst you do your profit, you can also be responsive to the environment in which you are operating. You should be able to respect the human rights of people who work for you. And you should also be able to respect rights of the community in which you operate in. As a company, a signed-on company, committed to the principles of the UN Global Compact, yearly you come out to tell us what are the activities you've done in the area of upholding the human rights of your workers, in the area of respecting and upholding the labor standards, in the areas of ensuring that your operations do not affect the environment negatively, and how well you've been able to fight anti-corruption. Even though it is voluntary to sign on to the compact, once you sign on, you have a responsibility to report on your progress. You have to communicate to the rest of the world through the United Nations Global Compact Office in New York how you are progressing in complying with the principles that you have voluntarily signed on to. And it comes in, in a tabular form. You go through, you give specific examples of activities that are done in the organization to uphold or in line with those principles mentioned. The Ghana Network also organized the fourth international UN Global Compact Learning Forum in 2006. CEOs lunch for heads of participating organizations, learning events and field visits. The key thing about uh, the network is that it should always plan programs, learning fora, that will help members who have signed on to know exactly how to implement, I would say, to implement the principles. We plan activities to go and see what others are doing as far as the implementation of the principles are concerned. In this regard, we visited Coca-Cola to see their environmental management of water and some of their management of the human relations part of it under labor rights. We've also visited the mines. There too, the key things are their corporate social responsibility within the communities, their management of the environment, uh, their practice of human rights. Because one of the problems about mining is that because mining competes for land, sometimes there is the perception that mining companies infringe on the rights of uh, the local people.